Welcome to JSA TV. I'm Liz Edwards, coming to you from London at the International Finance Forum hosted by Tech Capital. So joining me today is Doug Mouton, Advisory Board Member at Fidelis New Energy. Tell us all about yourself and, and what you com your company is doing. Well, thanks for having me, absolutely. Well, I, uh, I've been in the data industry for about 10 years now, coming from Microsoft and Meta, and now I'm an independent advisor, and one of my great relationships is with uh, Fidelis New Energy on their advisory board. And what do Fidelis do? Fidelis is really helping with a pathway to green, green and cleaner energy essentially a pathway to hydrogen, looking at how do we transition from available fuels today, principally natural gas, into a way that we can create a zero carbon energy source as well as create a pathway to hydrogen. Very, very topical, Doug, very indeed. But I believe you had some good uh, announcements this week. Fantastic news. Uh, we have signed up with Microsoft for the largest carbon offtake agreement on record. And we have a plant that will do biomass um, processing in Louisiana. It will take agricultural byproducts from principally sugarcane farming. The in refining process of sugarcane creates a product called bagasse, which is a kind of powdery cellulose material. And it's stacking up like crazy in these agricultural areas. You can see these piles from space. So we, we now have a plan to take this, what would normally be a land fill problem and we're able to use combined cycle gas and burn this product capturing the uh, NOx, the, the fumes and the carbon and we inject it in a classified class 6 well which is an injection well which has been sanctioned by uh, the environmental permitting agency to actually c contain the carbon right there on site. So we are sequestering uh, carbon from agricultural byproducts that would normally be a waste product, and we'll be doing that for the next 15 years with Microsoft. We're very excited. That is really exciting, very innovative. It is. And did you work directly with Microsoft to develop this? I was fortunately helping guide the team along and coaching and cheering you know, uh, from my role as an advisor, but I can't take credit for uh, doing the hard work. That's brilliant, Doug. So I mean, there's a huge growth in AI and high performance computing, all of which Microsoft has a vested interest in. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts around that. Well, I think uh, we're looking at a two-step boom right now. We're looking at a training model boom, and then we'll see an inference model boom. Pr principally in the US, where we're able to get large bits of land and capacity, we're seeing a lot of large language model play but we are seeing a large constraint with our utilities with the ability to provide power now for our needs. And the return on investment of an AI training model is order of magnitudes greater if we can deliver that in the next 24 months versus the next 60 months. So we are struggling in the US to get our regulators to respond that quickly with power. So we're seeing a number of projects, look at Stargate and others who are generating their own power with natural gas. At Fidelis, we just got legislative approval from the state of West Virginia for a five gigawatt site with gas pipelines with the ability to create power outside of the regulated utility. And we also have a class six injection well. So we can help our clients with power today. And then as they ramp into capturing their carbon, we can then take the carbon off of the combined cycle gas and inject it right there on site. So as opposed to like the investment in renewables that go into the larger economy or larger ecosystem of power, and this sometimes argued as greenwashing, we'll be able to offer our clients the ability to capture their carbon for the discrete use of their data center right there. That's amazing, Doug. The future is bright. Is. And maybe we will get to that circular economy before we know it. I think that's right. And I think sustainability works when we make it part of a virtuous cycle of costing less, taking less time, and embodying less carbon. If we're not driving sustainability from bottom line business fundamentals, it won't stick. Very interesting stuff, Doug. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, to our viewers, stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.